gold. That's what they say, and that is definitely the motto of this home. Because we're not concerned with having the latest anything. Instead, give us items with a sense of character and story that will last a lifetime, rather than the clinical sleekness of modernity. And today, you're going to meet the items in my house that still function as good as the day they were made, oldest to newest. So we start with the staple of any home, the sewing machine. This Federation sewing machine was manufactured by the Jones Company, a British company founded in 1860 by William Jones and Thomas Chadwick under the name Chadwick and Jones, which later became known as the Jones Sewing Machine Company. And the company produced sewing machines for almost 100 years until 1968. I'd like to say that it gets a lot of use, but I'm afraid my sewing skills are pretty lacklustre. God, if only I could cosplay, I bet my subscribers would be through the roof right now. You know what I'm saying. And so right now, we use the sewing machine more as a table to display my childhood doll's house. Sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, okay? Then we move on to the antique beds. This antique bed is from 1890 and was refurbished by a company called Seventh Heaven and then sold to me for £150 on eBay. And we even managed to nab a free bed base. You see, antique beds often needed a foundation, such as a box spring or slatted base to support the mattress properly. And my antique bed was so good that it encouraged my mum to buy her very own. Ah, my typewriter. Now, this typewriter is from the 1930s and was completely dismantled and refurbished by my amazing boyfriend as a Christmas present. It works an absolute dream and I love nothing more than hearing that little ding as I watch the rain drizzle down the window pane. a different one for you. This watering can is a genuine 1940s watering can and was again found on eBay. In full, it is a Regina EH and S Galve army watering can with its original rose or spout. £25, which I know seems like a lot for a watering can, but we've always wanted a quintessential traditional one, and so I just knew I had to buy it for my mum for her birthday. Now, the star of the show is my cooker. This new home gas cooker was likely manufactured anywhere from 1946 to 1949 and is actually featured in a museum in Rainhill, Liverpool, the home of its manufacturers. The new home cookers ran for many years, with domestic freestanding models becoming more modern with the decades. We found ours on eBay for £16. It had belonged to an elderly gentleman who no longer needed it, and then his daughter sold it to us after it had been sat in a garage for many years. And all she needed, the cooker, not the lady, was a replacement gas pipe and some light refurbishment and she was good to go. I tell you, old things were built to last. She lights with a match and she has a hob, a grill and an oven. And although small compared to modern day cookers, I tell you, she cooks the best meals. And if you guys caught my tour of Mr. Straw's house, an unchanged property since the 1920s, then you may have seen my cooker's grandmother in their kitchen. And by the way, the fact that we had the exact same kettle was completely unintentional. Now, tin openers is something that I've always struggled with, but this 1950s fully working one works a dream and was gifted to me by my work colleague when she salvaged it from her mother's garage. Again, after some light touch-ups, she was good to go and I promise you she's the easiest tin opener I have ever used. Honestly, I could just never get the knack for them, but she works a treat. On to another greatly unnecessary purchase, I bought my mum this 1950s hairdryer which only has one speed and two settings, hot and cold. 
And when I say speed, it is kind of more like someone's just breathing gently on you. But for people with fine hair, she probably works a treat. Plus, what an adorable colour. Now, scooting ahead a few decades, we've got our adorable 1970s phone that I think looks a lot older. She still rings, but it does take kind of a while to dial. Hello? Hello, you. Oh, it's been such a long time. How are you? Note to self, do not use in an emergency. Plus, no one actually has our landline number anymore because, let's face it, landlines are a thing of the past. So, if this thing ever did ring, who would be calling us? And a bonus item, this compact Presario PC from 1995. Now, I'm not saying 1995 is old, but in the world of tech, she's kind of a grandma. This is actually my grandparents' computer that I inherited and I just didn't have the heart to get rid of it. She works as perfectly as the day she was made. And you know one thing I always notice about this computer is no matter how long she's been switched off and unplugged, when I turn her back on, she will always remember the exact date and time. Now I've had some modern tech where where I turn them on, it doesn't have the correct date and time. So honestly, she's an art form. Oh, just listen to that whirring. And for anybody who's wondering, she fully supports Internet Explorer 5. She's got a ginormous motherboard and lots of nostalgic loveliness for any 90s kids out there. And she's got fully working games from when she used to act as the family PC. And if anyone recognises any of these games, then an absolute gold star for you. She's got the original Microsoft Paint and Microsoft Word from the year 2000 with that somewhat annoying assistant, Clippy? C Clippy? Was, was, was that his name? Anyway, he can mind his own business. And when I'm around her, I just feel weirdly safe. And I've got so much pride in keeping her in good working order. I mean, who knows? Maybe she belongs in a museum. Microsoft, call me. Now, please feel free to leave me in this comforting world of nostalgia, and I'll see you next time.